What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna check out an awesome extension from Curic for managing your axis location in SketchUp. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so make sure you stick around to the end because I'm gonna show you a workflow for swapping objects out using this function that I think you're gonna absolutely love. But first off, let's talk a little bit about why the axes matter, right? Because we all know that the SketchUp model itself has axes in here. And the axes that we have in here set the direction of your inferencing as well as like the central point of your model. However, what a lot of people don't know, or I guess maybe they just don't think about it all that much, is whenever you group an object, those objects all have their own axis. And so these axes for the objects are really important because they do a few different things. And so basically the way the object axes work is they define the object's location in the 3D space. And then within the object, you can also have a distance from the axes as well. So if I move this over, notice how this object still has an axis that's over here. Um, and that's especially important for things like face me components because they set the location around which the object rotates like this. So the other thing that object axes do is they also help define the bounds of the object. And this can be a little bit problematic because if you look at this object right here, it has an axis on the corner and this object is rotated, right? So if we look at this object, notice how the object bounds, which basically surround the entirety of the 3D object, um, are actually defined based on this starting point right here and the axis direction. So what we have is we have a bounding box right here that doesn't align with the actual geometry in here. Well then, if you try to scale the object, notice how the object bounds don't align with this object anymore. Instead, they align with the object axes rather than the object geometry like this. And this can get even more complex when you have an object that's rotated on multiple different axes from the object origin. So again, notice how that bounding box is set right here. And so what that means is that means when you scale this object, you get a little bit of a nonsense scale on here. So the bounds are going to set the direction of that scale box. And so let's say that we wanted to fix the scale on this, what we could do, and this is before we ever get to this extension, right? What we could do is we could realign the object axes. Notice how these are the axes actually within the object. But when we do that, the bounds of the object change as well. And so if we scale this like this, notice how our scaling now aligns with this object. And so a lot of the time what you want is you want to place your object axes right in the middle of an object like this. Well, when you have an object that isn't symmetrical, like this tree symbol that I downloaded from the 3D warehouse, that can be a little bit problematic. That's where Curic Axis comes in. And so Curic Axis is a tool that you can download from Curic's Gumroad page, and you can actually download it for free if you want to, that is set up to help you quickly set axes for objects in SketchUp. So this can be massively valuable for automating the process of setting those axis locations. So if you want to download it for free, you can put a value of $0 in here, though I do recommend if you can um, put in a value that you're willing to pay and uh, make kind of a donation to Curic when you download it because um, supporting developers as they create awesome extensions like this allows them to keep doing it. But either way, I'll link to this in the notes down below and you can download Curic Axis. And so once you install this extension, you can right click in your uh, extensions or toolbar area and you can click on Curic Axis in order to get this to show up. And so what you do is you select an object and you can click on the option for set axes. Notice what that's gonna do is that's gonna give you a series of snap points based on your object orientation. You'll get more snap points when this is in 3D, but in this case, notice how this is giving me a number of different snap points in here. Now, you can hold the control key in order to see the bottom only, but notice how I can pick the center of this object and then I can click off of it. Well, now if I click into this object, you can see how these axes are being placed based on whatever point that I pick like this. So moving the axes around gets really simple from that standpoint when you do this. Now, one cool thing about this is when you use this tool, not only can you pick it based on a location 
like that. But let's say we wanted to fix the axes on this object. You could click right here and notice how it's going to give you points on the bounding box of the object. But you can also hold the shift key in order to find a custom point on here. So in this case, right, without me ever having to click in here, I can hold the shift key, click over this point, and then click in order to set the bounding box of the object. So I'm just going to hold shift right here. And say we wanted it on this midpoint right here. Notice how if I click off, if I click into this object, it placed my point right here on this box. Now, another cool thing about this is when you do this, you can also, I'm going to click on this object right here. I'm going to hold shift. You can click and drag in order to align the direction of the axes in here. So basically this is allowing me to set that axis location right here without ever having to click into the object. So I can click like this in order to set this object. Now, another cool thing about this is you can also, when you do that, you can hit the tab key and notice how it's going to um, basically move this around in different locations or different directions like this. If you don't like it, you could try putting it in here like this in order to get a different rotation. But then when I let up on this, I click off of it and then I double click. Notice how my bounding box has now been aligned based on this location right here. Okay, so another great example of why this might be important is if you're dealing with a tree like this one, this is just one I downloaded from the 3D warehouse. Well, if you double click in here, notice how the axis location is on the corner. Well, that's problematic, A, because if I want to swap this out, um, that's going to cause issues. But B, if I used a random rotation plugin, which I'm going to show you in a second, um, it would kind of move it all over the place, right? But if I select this object, I can click in here and notice how it gives me this bounding box. It shows me where the existing is right here. Well, notice how if I hold the control key, this is going to give me the option to do a bottom only, and I can find the center of the object based on the bounds right here. So um, this is based on the bounds of the object, not on the actual geometry that's down here, but it allows you to quickly find the center of the object like this. Now, if I double click in here, notice how my axes are in the middle like this. Now, one of the cool things about this, this is just a collection of plants that I downloaded off the 3D warehouse, but notice how most of them, the axes are not centered on the object, right? They're like off of the object a little bit. You can actually select multiple objects, tap on this, and notice how they're all selected. Well, if you hold the control key right here, you can find the center of all of them at once. So now, notice how this set the axes for every single one of these objects at the center of the object right here. That can be a massive, massive time saver for setting the axes to the bottom center of objects um, in libraries or other things like that. Um, I would get this tool for that function alone. And so another cool function is if you don't want to do this manually, you can also right click on your object. Notice how there's an axes tool. So there's different things that you can set, right? So you can set these to the center of an object right here, but we don't really want this on the center because that doesn't solve our bounding box problem. But if you right click on this, go to axes and you click on align to longest edge, what it's going to do is it's going to come in here and it's going to align this to the longest edge and it's going to allow you to pick a point, right? So if I click in here after it aligns to the longest edge, notice how that's actually going to allow me to set my model axes aligned to the longest edge of this object at a point that I selected in here. So again, massive, massive time saver. And so one of the cool things you can do with this is you can use the axis function. You can align to the longest edge on all of these objects right here, which is going to give you a little bit weird result um, just depending on the length of the books. But there's a free extension from Curic on his Gumroad page called Curic Reset Rotation. And if I right click and use this tool right here, it's going to reset the rotation of those objects based on that axis location. Now, obviously, this isn't perfect, but it gets us a lot closer to being able to like align stacks of books and things like that. Okay, and so why this is really exciting, at least for me and where I use this most, is I use it for components like plants. And so within these components, right, I have multiple different objects in here. Um, so I have both the 3D tree as well as the 2D symbol. 
like this? Well, what we can do is because all of these objects have their axes in the center of the object, right? The axes are all in the same location. What that means is that means that we can actually swap these out. So say that I was to pick like every other tree or something like this and go into the component section of my tray, I could actually right click on these and replace the selected instances with other trees. And because they have the exact same axis location. I can do that without them moving around on me. So I can look at different tree and plant options like this. And so that's actually a massive time saver for me. And by the way, side note, if you're looking for a workflow where you can have 3D trees as well as two-dimensional um, symbols like this that all come out as nice site plans and layout, you should definitely check out my course because my landscape essentials module is rolling out right now. I'll link to that in the notes down below. Okay, so this should give you a pretty good idea of how you can use Curic Axis. This is one of the things that I have in my tool set that I use all the time for quickly setting up axes in my model. So I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below. Do you use this tool? How would you use it? I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.